Hello and welcome to this lesson on derived units as part of the mathematical skills topic uh, designed to support uh, new A-level scientists. Uh, my name is Mr Van Hook, I'm the Director of Science at Midhurst Royal College uh, and I'm one of the physics teachers. In this lesson we're going to go over derived units, how to uh, derive a compound unit for some familiar quantities or establish what the base units are uh, of common SI derived units. Don't worry too much if you're not sure about what those terms are, uh, we will uh, look at those as the lesson goes on. So before starting on this lesson, um, I would assume that you know about some of the basic SI units for common measurements. And by that, I mean things like uh, the meter and the second, uh, the amp and the kilogram and how those apply and what those each, uh, which quantity they each measure. Then in terms of compound units, I would expect you to be familiar with things like joules and uh, newtons and volts and um, what quantities each of those would measure. And I'd expect you to have some familiarity with in indices, but don't worry too much if you don't, because I will go through that during this lesson. So just to be uh, clear on those things, um, have a go at answering these four quick quiz questions. Uh, pause the video and uh, restart the video when you've got your answers uh, as the answers show on the next slide. So hopefully you have got um, all of those um, correct. Uh, you may have expressed meters per second slightly differently. You might have put that as m s to the power of minus one. No worries if you have already done that. That's excellent because that's where we want to get to uh, towards the end of this lesson. Um, and those other ones there, just make sure that you are OK with what those are. If you're not too sure of those, well, there's probably a good idea at this stage is to go back over some of those uh, GCSE topics that you've done previously. Take a look through the equation sheets, take a look, look through the list of equations, look at each of those quantities and review what are the units because it is assumed that you do know those uh, and there's also a bit of an assumption that you know those equations because those equations we are going to refer to later on in the lesson. So before we go over the derived units, let's have a look at the base units. There are five key base units that we need to know about and be able to use. The first is the base unit of length, the meter. Um, there is a standard scientific um, measurement of what the meter is. Uh, and so this is a fundamental base unit. We've also got the kilogram as a fundamental base unit. All other units can be derived from uh, a kilogram. The time uh, is uh, our third base unit. Uh, we have temperature, which is measured in Kelvin, which is a base unit. Um, one Kelvin has the same uh, temperature value as one degree centigrade. Uh, the difference for Kelvin is where zero is. Um, we know that for degrees centigrade or degrees Celsius, um, the zero point is the point at which water freezes uh, at atmospheric temperature, zero degrees centigrade. Um, for Kelvin, uh, zero Kelvin is defined differently. It's defined as something called absolute zero, which is the point at which um, matter, or ma particles of matter uh, cease to have kinetic energy. Um, we will look at that uh, it, when we come on to the uh, a gases topic that we will do um, in uh, the second year of A-level physics. Um, and then our last base unit is uh, the ampere, which is how we measure uh, current. There is um, often people talk about a sixth one, which I'm just putting here as for reference, and that's, chemists will be more concerned about this one, which is uh, the mole uh, as a base unit. So we know that there are many, many quantities in addition to those uh, five base quantities, uh, five base units and quantities that we've just uh, learnt about. Uh, there are many others such as um, speed or acceleration, force, energy, all of those. We call those 
derived quantities. Those are derived quantities where actually we can we can uh, work use equations to come up with those. Um, and for each of those um, derived quantities, there is a specific equation that is used to define that derived quantity. And in turn, we use those specific equations to establish the derived units uh, for each of those derived quantities. Let's have a look at an example. Um, so we should, we're all familiar with the idea that speed is equal to distance divided by time. And you are very familiar, of course, with the units of distance. There we've got meters divided by seconds. Um, so for meters divided by seconds, we can write that as m over s. I'm using red here to indicate that we're dealing with units to keep that separate from, from the black text, um, which is the quantities. Just hopefully to, to make sure you, you can see a distinction between the two of those. So we've got meters divided by seconds there uh, for speed. At A level, what we do is rather than writing m slash s, we write that as ms to the minus one. So let's have a look at a second one just here. Um, a second uh, e equation that we should be familiar with is charge is equal to current multiplied by time. This is actually the defining uh, equation for charge. Um, charge can appear in many other e equations that we'll come across during A-level physics, just as speed can uh, appear in many other equations but it is defined by this equation here. This is our defining equation. And so to then consider how we work out the unit of that one or what the unit will be, um, we know that current multiplied by time is amperes or amps multiplied by seconds, which we can write as AS. And we should know that the unit of charge is a Coulomb capital C. So the, the Coulombs base units are amp seconds. That is the base units of a Coulomb. So the Coulomb there is a derived unit and the base units for a Coulomb are amp seconds. Okay, so indices, I mentioned that we would have a little bit of a look at these. Um, what these are, they're a shorthand for multiplying a term by itself. Uh, and they are very handy at um, basically shortening uh, long lines of calculations. We can also call them powers or we can call them exponents. So here is an example of one of those. We could write 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 um, where we're multiplying 7 four times, multiplying 7 by itself four times. Far easier is to write 7 raised to the power of 4 or 7 uh, exponential 4. That's a far easier way to do this. Now we can take this same approach with any term, uh, variables, you could write it as 3x squared, uh, uh, but we can also use it for units as well, and that's where we're going to use it in this lesson. So here we've got meters times meters times meters, okay, so how we might be measuring something for volume. Uh, and we can express that as meters cubed, hopefully something that you're already familiar with. So in order to work with units um, and indices, what we need to know is the laws of addition and subtraction for indices. Here's an example here to help us understand this. We've got five multiplied by itself three times, multiplied by five multiplied by itself four times, which far simpler, we can write as five to the power of three multiplied by five to the power of four. And what you should be able to see is if we remove those brackets, that we're basically uh, remove, uh, multiplying five by itself seven times. So we can express that as five raised to the power of seven equals five raised to the power of three multiplied by five raised to the power of four. And hopefully what you can see there is essentially we've got five raised to the power of 3 plus 4 is equal to 5 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 4. So 
our general rule that we can write for this is if we've got some quantity, some value, some unit in this, partic in, in this particular lesson of A, let's say, uh, raised to the power of M, and we multiply that A raised to the power of N, we're writing that as A M plus N. So where, we, where, where we're multiplying units together, we add their indices. That's what we're going to do. We're going to add their indices. Now for subtraction, this is a little different here. Uh, not too different here. So here we've got uh, 6 multiplied by itself 5 times divided by 6 multiplied by itself. So we've got 6 to the power of 5 divided by 6 to the power of 2. The answer to this is the same as 6 to the power of 3. And essentially the way we go about getting that, we've got 6 to the power of 5 divided by 6 to the power of 2, which is equal to 6 to the power of 5 minus 2. And that's how we get to 6 to the power of 3. So our general rule here uh, is uh, similar to our one for addition, uh, but different here uh, because what we're doing is instead of multiplying by a to the power n, we're dividing by. And in many ways, you can think of um, division as the opposite uh, to uh, multiplication. And so therefore, our rule here is using the opposite to addition. We are now using subtraction. So we have got here a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a raised to the power of m minus n. Now, key thing to point out here is, let's say you've got seconds divided by seconds. Uh, we could express that as seconds to the power of 1 minus 1, which would be seconds to the power of 0, which essentially means the seconds have cancelled each other out and we're just left with 1. Um, so with this subtraction rule, what we can end up with is no unit at all. So this is the first of two worked examples to show you how to find the SI base units of a uh, derived unit. And we're going to start off by looking at what are the SI base units of a joule. So our starting point is always to write out the quantity, in this particular case, the joule is energy. You, you could write work done and that would be fine. And we know that energy is equal to force multiplied by distance moved. So that tells us that one joule is equal to one Newton multiplied by one meter. And that is a definition of energy. We can write that as a joule is equal to a Newton meter. We're still though left with a derived quantity there, and that is the Newton. And so we can then write that force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. There's our defining uh, equation for force. And so that tells us that one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared, which we can write as a Newton equals a kilogram meter second to the power of minus two. We then will put that uh, as units there for the Newton uh, back into our equation there, our units there for the joule. So rather than writing uh, a joule is equal to a Newton times a meter, we write that uh, a joule is equal to a kilogram multiplied by a meter multiplied by a second to the minus two, and then multiply that by a meter. And we simplify that down and we get a kilogram meter squared second to the power of minus two. So that then will be the SI base units of the joule. So let's take a look at how we work out the SI base unit for a volt. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write it out uh, to show you exactly what you're working out uh, could look like for each of these. 
So we're going to start off by writing out um, our defining equation for the derived quantity that a volt is the unit of. And we know that a volt is a unit of potential difference. And we know, or we should know, that the defining equation for potential difference is equal to uh, energy transferred or work done, and I shall write here uh, work done, uh, divided by the charge. Our next step that we do here is we need to write out the defining equations for each of work done and charge. So uh, I'm going to write uh, force multiplied by distance, uh, and that is uh, the defining equation for charge here is current multiplied by time. I keep going. Uh, force is mass multiplied by acceleration um, multiplied by distance. Uh, and then I'm going to divide that by uh, current multiplied by time. Now, it could be argued that what we sh I should keep on doing here is I should uh, say, well, acceleration is a uh, change of speed divided by time and speed itself is distance over time. But we know that the units of acceleration here are meters, seconds to the minus two. And so because the units of acceleration are expressed in base units, there's no real need to go any further than that. So I'm now going to write these out uh, in the base units that we've got. So we've got uh, mass is kilograms. We've got acceleration, as I just said, in meters seconds to the minus two, multiplied by distance in meters. And those are divided by current, which is amps multiplied by seconds. So the next step that I'm going to do is I want to put this all on one line. Uh, and so I'm going to write this as kilograms multiplied by meters. And I'm going to just add in an extra multiplied by seconds to the minus two, sticking an extra multiplication symbol multiplied by meters. And I'm going to bring these ones here, which are currently dividing. Uh, and I'm going to make them multiple multipliers but I raise the indices or change the indices instead of being uh, divided by amps, I'm going to do amps to the minus one. And I'll do the same here with seconds to the minus one. Now I will apply my indices rules. So I've only got one kilogram. I can just do that. Uh, I've got a meter here, which I could think of as a meter to the power of one, but that would be to write an awful lot of ones in various places, wouldn't you? There's another one there. So that's meters squared. And then I've got uh, minus two plus minus one, which we know is minus three and an amp to the minus one. So I can just finish that off by writing kilograms, meters squared, seconds minus three, amps to the minus one. Double underline it because it's my answer. And there we have it. So the task that has been set uh, and is in the uh, transition booklet that you will have received is to complete this uh, table. So hopefully you will be clear about how you need to go about doing this. Uh, you can, of course, rewatch the video at any time, um, but give these a go and some solutions to these will be uh, put up uh, before the end of the summer term.